That was a little bit weird. I can't move my neck back. What does that mean? Shoulders out, chin down, shoulders. Consistent volume, take pauses. Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about Yan Cha. But first, I'd like to say thanks to all the people who've been commenting on our videos recently and telling us how much they enjoy the type of information we've been putting into them. We really appreciate the feedback, so please keep it up. And if you're not already a subscriber, please click that button down below and the little bell so you can get notified whenever we post a new video. So the first question is, what is Yan Cha? Yan Cha is Chinese for rock tea or granite tea, and it's a kind of oolong that comes from the Wuyi area. The Wuyi area is a very important characteristic of Yan Cha as well. It's a beautiful area featuring tall cliffs and valleys with tea growing in the valleys and little brooks and streams running along these tea meadows. It's absolutely spectacular. The region also gets tons of rainfall that comes over and through the cliffs, not just creating beautiful waterfalls and stunning views, but also giving the water something special that it passes on to the tea. Definitely gives Wuyi Yan Cha a unique tasting characteristic. As I mentioned, Yan Cha is a type of oolong tea, but unlike Te Guan Yin, which is another kind of oolong tea, rock tea draws on many cultivars from which it's made. The most common of these is Shui Xian, one of my favorites for sure, and also loved by the local people in the area where rock tea is made. Shui Xian also has the, in, an, interesting, an interesting element in that it has an old bush style, which brings a whole new flavor dimension to the tea. Another fairly well-known rock tea is Rou Gui, but many of you may not know that this is a relatively new style of rock tea coming only from the 70s or 80s sort of time frame. Then there's the top five or the big daddies of rock tea, well known in China. Of course, Da Hong Pao, probably well known by many of you tea lovers out there, but there's also Bai Ji Guan, Shui Jing Gui, Te Lo Han, and Ban Tian Yao. Ban Tian Yao. And one of the most exciting things about rock tea is that there are tons of independent or micro cultivars also being experimented with all the time. Things like Siming 2000 and others. So there's a, this is a vast area of oolong tea to explore and just have fun with. Those are some of the Yan Cha cultivars. But when are they harvested? Well, typically not until late spring, largely because of the climate in the area, but also because we're not pursuing tender young buds. It's not a green tea. It's an oolong tea, and the oolong process is quite rigorous, so the material has to endure this process. Also, part of the process for yan cha is a pretty significant roasting period, which takes time and can't be rushed. That's why you won't see yan cha on the market until usually autumn. Sometimes you'll see it in the late summer, because there's always a race to be the first one to get the yan cha out for this year, but the ones that take longer tend to be a little bit more delicious, in my opinion. Once you have that delicious yan cha in hand, the best time to drink it is when you're thirsty. Of course, start right away. But typically, yan cha are best one to two years after they've been made. It lets that roasting sink into the leaf and make the flavor thick and rich. Of course, like any other oolong, if it's a well-made yan cha, you can let that age for as long as you want. It's just going to get better and better. So while you're sipping your yan cha, some flavor notes you can expect are tobacco, dark chocolate, mineral, things like that are sort of associated with yan cha, but a good yan cha should go beyond just those elements. A good yan cha needs to have an element of floral, a hint of sweetness, and it needs to be balanced and integrated. It should linger in your mouth for a while with a really pleasant aftertaste. The best way to brew your rock tea is definitely gong fu brewing. Rock tea is a strip oolong, so like any other strip oolong, you're going to fill your guy one about three quarters full of dry leaf. Give it a quick rinse with boiling water and start with flash infusions. Infusions will get progressively longer and, I don't know, 10 to 20 infusions 
from your rock tea, depending on the quality, of course. If you'd like a step-by-step -step video on how to brew rock tea, please leave us a comment down below. We'd love to make that video for you. That's the who, what, when, where, how of rock tea. I hope you found it informative. Be sure to follow us on social media and check out our blog for all kinds of other information about Chinese tea. Finally, click that subscribe button for more videos on tea travel, tea processing, how to brew tea, and much, much more. We love making these videos for you. We hope you enjoy them. We'll see you next time. Ooh, there's a flop. The best way, the best way, the best way, the best way, best, the best, the best way, the best, bleep, and give it a flash infusion with boiling water. No, it's not a flash infusion, it's a rinse.